Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day, whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. I am stoked you are all here. I want to take a quick second to thank all the channel members. Thank you guys so much. And to ask any of you, if you haven't had the chance yet and you're so inclined, if you'd please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon. I would really appreciate it. And if you guys spend any time over on Instagram, same handle over there. J Evans underscore knife addict underscore life. If you hook up with me over there, send me a DM. I'd love to connect. You've got another way to communicate with me in the channel. But today I wanted to go over, I like to do these top five videos and I like to kind of analyze what my carry patterns are. And as you guys know, or if you're new to the channel, I carry an EDC fixed blade with me pretty much on the daily. I'd say at least four out of seven days, usually five out of seven days. Um, some kind of EDC fixie, and I like to kind of go back and revisit what I've carried the most. And this is going to be kind of like what I've carried the most August, September, um, this fall, kind of early fall, and what seems to be a pattern now. And I'll start with uh, the shed knife skur. This knife is the largest secondary carry I carry. The, the skur is a 154 cm hunka 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 blade um the overall knife is seven and a quarter inches with a and i won't measure all these with three three and a quarter inch blade about a three inch cutting area um so it's not a very long knife however it's very thick it's almost a quarter inch thick in blade stock it's got this hollow grind one thing Jack Billings over at Shed Knives has done that I think will be cool in 2024 is he's raised the height of this hollow grind. But this knife is a chopper. It is a poker. It is a prep knife. It is a skinner because of that belly. It is an overbuilt little tank of an EDC fixie. So I could carry this as my EDC primary carry but it is a little thick and I do like having a slicey knife with me either in my slip joint or in my uh, folder. But this guy is a beast. It is the Shed Knives Skur 2023 edition. I use these horizontal IWB loops that I picked up from Amazon. It allows me to carry it appendix style or if I want I can flip it around and carry it scout style on my back. But I typically carry it appendix. I love the fact that it's got this lanyard area that's just this piece of tang that allows you to hammer or um, pound or crack with it if you need it. And the retention in the sheath for a knife of this size, there's absolutely no rattle. Perfect retention. Just a great knife. And this is definitely one of my top five recent carries. And in all truths, it's been... Uh, Pretty consistent carry weekly um, for the last few months since I got it after Blade Show. I really love this knife, guys. I can't recommend it enough. That's the Shed Skur. But moving on, we will go to a newer knife in my collection, but that is getting a lot of carry time. I find out sometimes that it's my fourth knife that I'm carrying because I forgot that I've got it around my neck from the day before, and I put on something that's going to be coming up here shortly. Um, and uh, I'll carry two fixies with me. But I saw this first on Tri-State EDC, Cole's channel. This is the Amsler Hurricane Razor. This happens to be the model 2049, which is the mini, the smallest of the Amsler razors. And I look at this as an EDC scalpel, but it's really much tougher than that. This is the 80s finish, which is just a lot splattered DLC coating. But this is a hunk of MagnaCut, heat treated at about 65. This particular blade shape style is the Tanto. I don't know if you can see that Tanto there. It's hand sharpened over at Ansler, which is just one day or Amsler. And they make this knife in about four different sizes, maybe five. Um, I'll link it in the description. He sells on Etsy and I picked this up for right about, I think it was $120. 
maybe 140 because it had this special finish. I think if you just go with the raw Magna Cut or the stonewashed Magna Cut, it's 120. If you're the type that's into glow tubes or tritium type vials, this will fit tritium vials. And he sells some pretty cool glow tubes to go with it. I think it's a $20 upgrade per tube. But this little knife has O-rings and a pocket clip. So I can carry it as a neck knife, which is a good bit of the time. But if I'm wearing a dress shirt, like um, a button down that has a shirt pocket, it carries just like a pen. So when I put it in my shirt pocket, all that's sticking out is this right here. So it's very, very pen-like. And I love to carry it that way as well. But it's great for opening packages. It's great for cutting paracord. It's a great survival knife, i.e. self-defense knife. If you're having to rescue your Slurpee, or you just need to jab it into a problem, it is, uh, it's that kind of knife, guys. And it's small. It disappears regardless of how you carry it. You could easily put the pocket, use the clip as a pocket clip and carry it in your left pocket where I carry my slip joint. That's just, I don't do it because I've got that pocket, you know, reserved for my slip joint. So kind of coming in at number three, we've got the Amsler Hurricane Razor Mini, model 2049. Then we come into another thin, light, very, very cool knife. This is uh, made by Tyler Denny. It's the T. Denny Apprentice. I will link his Instagram in the description, and I urge you guys to follow his page. He'll drop these knives pretty much weekly. This happens to be acid-washed Magna Cut, heat-treated very well. I want to say it's 64-65 Boss Heat Treat. Um, this utilizes a handle that I'd never seen before. It's vintage caramel micarta and it looks just like caramel if you remember how caramel used to look if you kids are young enough to or old enough to remember that but the handle is very neutral and it fits the hand very well this is not a batoning knife this is not a hard use fixed blade this guy's is a slicer this is very good at slicing into those tight places opening boxes, opening letters, opening perpetrators, you name it. I mean, this knife is, with the poon and with this very sure grip, it is a very jabby, spoky knife. It is a splinter remover. It's got this nice swedge on top, and it's just very well done Magna Cut. Full tang. This little knife you almost have to hold in your hand. I took a chance on it. I forget which one in the community told me to check them out. This is the only knife I think that Tyler makes. He makes this little uh, apprentice and he makes a lot of them. And what I was saying earlier is you see him in acid wasp and he also does a belt satin. So last week he dropped, I think two acid washed and three belt. No, it's three acid washed and two belt satin. I was very close to getting one of them because a couple of them had shred carbon fiber. Um, he uses Ultim. He uses Micarta. Really cool materials. If nothing else, go down to the description link in the video and give him a follow just to look at some cool knives and kind of follow what he does. But this is a knife. I mean, any of these knives have the full Giovanna approval. And if you hate it for some reason and you do get it, I have nothing to gain from it except sharing my experiences with the knives and these are all winners or I wouldn't be talking about them with you guys but if you happen to get one and you don't like it reach out to me we'll talk about it if it turns out to be something that you don't like for some flaw or reason I'll talk about buying it from you I'm not that worried about it because every one of these knives are absolutely fantastic coming in right around number two this stays in my back pocket pretty much a lot of the time number two and number one get carried a lot more and that's just because they're they're that easy to carry this has a concealment carry deep carry clip which works very similar to an ulti clip except it doesn't have the slip or the uh i don't have one with an up yeah i do it doesn't have this pull here that's kind of kind of tough you know it can be hard on your finger to get that to pop out and if you look at them side by side, the ulti clip's deeper and it's also heavier. 
So this clip system is lighter than this clip system, even though this one's longer. So I put this in my back pocket, let this go over the hem of my pants, and then it's absolutely stable in my back pocket. I reach around, all these TKL knives have this little jimp thumb spot, which I can feel tactically. I can just feel it, I don't have to look at it, behind the clip, push it, and this knife deploys effortlessly. This is a little chunky knife. This is a little mini baton knife. This is a stick through a piece of plywood knife or stick through a Slurpee Steeler knife. Um, it's small. It's got an extremely comfortable handle. It's G10, and you can, again, choose different colors of this. It is uh, 80 CRV, I think it's HD steel. And I'll leave TKL's site linked down in the description as well. And if you read on his site why he uses this steel, he also uses ABEL. But he prefers this steel for the way that it sharpens in the field. It's edge retention. And he has not only a special heat treat process that's proprietary that he developed, that he kind of lays out in his, on his website. I urge you to read about it. But he also uses nitrate boron, I think is what it's called, or I probably butchered that. It's a chemical process. You can read about it on his website, but it comes from his years in the military, and they use that finish or that treatment to treat bolt carriers, PP barrels, things that are exposed to a lot of heat and a lot of wear. This blade looks stonewashed, but it's actually treated with that nitrate boron. I think that's what it's called. And what it actually does is it coats, protects, and hardens this blade even more to where the finish is HRC at about 80, or the blade comes in about 60, 61. But just a really well done little blade. If you look at this knife or any TKL knife really closely, you'll see that this grind is achieved by that CNC milling where you have these little tiny stair steps that you can see in the blade as it's getting down to the grind before you sharpen it. I just find that not only precision work, but I find it really cool. Very slight branding. You just have TKL on the blade. And this is the TKL Knives Piranha. And it is my number two most carried knife. And it's going back in my back pocket right now because that's where it came from. And my number one carry knife is my latest acquisition, which I've kind of boogered up my strap. I need to loosen it a little bit. But this is my Jacob Creates Arctic Sunset Chickadee. I picked this up at River's Edge Cutlery. You guys probably remember the unboxing. Hadn't been that long ago, but it's been on my belt, kidney style or appendix style almost every day. I wear this literally inside my first loop by my buckle so when i have this on my belt it's literally right to the right and under my belly button and it turns at an angle so you don't see it if my shirt's tucked in it's not all that great but a t-shirt anything like that you don't see it you don't feel it i can fall asleep with this knife pinned to my stomach or strapped to my stomach and i don't know it's there but the jacob creates chickadee is one of my all-time favorites I came and had a chance, just was happened to be on River Edge Cutlery site when this knife happened to be in stock because they don't stay in stock long. I clicked on it out of curiosity and saw that it was 20 CV steel, which is a steel that I don't have in my chickadees. I have a MagnaCut and I have an S90V, both of which I love. The S90V is a, a satin finish with a full flat grind, where the other two are like a seven eighths flat grind where you can see that you've got that little flat at the top and then it comes down the others the s90v is a full flat but these are very slicey for me it's a full three finger knife with a very thick blade that i can put my thumb on and literally apply as much pressure as i need to i can squeeze this knife till my arm turns red and it leaves no hot spot no uncomfort discomfort. I haven't done hard cutting with the 20 CV, but I have started fires by feather sticking with one of these knives and really working at a campsite one night. I didn't baton anything or try to split anything down with it. I had a kukri for that, 
but I did all the feather sticking. I processed cardboard on my daily carry. I use it, of course, to open boxes, which is what I do, you know, most of the time with my knives. But this is the number one right now. And the chickadee's always kind of been a real close to a number one for me because I love the knife. So the Jacob Creates Chickadee is going to come in right at number one. I'm going back into my back pocket to get the t -Kel. You'll be able to see all these in size. The t -Kel Piranha. This, this knife is available now or will be very soon. There's pre-orders or reservations up right now for the, uh, they're getting finished up. And then we go to the T. Denny Fantastic Little Apprentice, which when we talk about it being thin, not to slow this down, this will give you an idea of how much thinner this knife is. And then we've got the Amsler Mini Hurricane. It is a great little knife that gives you several ways to carry it. And again, you don't realize that you've got it because it is so light. It is such an understated, minimalistic carry. And finally, we've got our Shed Knives Skur, which is by far the largest but we measured that, and you guys see that it's still a very manageable little knife at seven and a quarter inches overall. Again, especially if you carry it like I do, scout style, or in your appendix. And again, it's, it's a bruiser, right? It'd be more the campsite knife, but I carry it on Saturdays and Sundays. I just enjoy it. I enjoy having a big knife. I put a couple of shorts up. You can go watch where I've hacked through some bamboo that grew a little too far out into my yard. I've got some more to hack down. I'll try to film it because it's therapeutic. But guys, thank you for watching my videos. I hope you don't find these boring. My tastes change just like y'all's do. And I want to just share with you what I'm using on the daily because that's all my channel's about is what I buy, what I think's cool, what I think's not as cool and how it makes me feel not trying to influence anything i just know when i first started watching videos and still i get good information by being able to see knives that i might not see before and then i research those knives if it's right for you when i'm telling you that a knife i think is a good knife it hasn't been put through super hard tests but so if you're a super hard tester there are great channels that, that'll give you that information probably on any of these knives. But what I like to do is talk about how it works in an urban EDC jungle for me. And more importantly, I'm a collector and an enthusiast and I love knives and knives make me feel different ways. I'm gonna get off my little explanation now, but that is really what it all boils down to. These five are fantastic. Guys, I look forward to keeping these, this type of content in front of you plus bringing you unboxings, reviews, and my weekly live streams that I'm just thankful that y'all come to and hang out with me with. So again, thanks to the channel members. Please, if you haven't, hit that subscribe, that bell notification icon, and please look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Please look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. Choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.